I have some news to share. I just quit my job. I still can't believe I did that, and yes, we have a lot to catch up on. Okay, so some of you probably watched my video that I posted two years ago on what no one tells you about working at a startup. And yes, I am wearing that same outfit in tribute to that video. And here I am sitting here two years later, reflecting on all four years that I spent at the company. And I joined Notion back in 2019 when we were a small team of 20. And in four years, we grew to over 500 employees across six global offices. And I joined Notion for a very simple reason. I just love the product and the mission behind the company. That's it. And I remember when people used to ask me like, hey, where do you work, blah, blah, blah. I would say, oh, this small company called Notion. And they would be like, cool, never heard of it, but sounds good. Now I feel like you can't get away from it. You walk outside, you see the billboards, you open your phone, and your favorite influencer is talking about Notion. And instead of sharing the top lessons I've learned about company building, I wanted to share the personal operating principles that guided my time there. You know how companies have values that dictate how they work. These are the beliefs that I've both adopted and applied during my time there. Beliefs that I will definitely carry with me to my next chapter. So I hope you enjoy. The first operating principle is find what keeps you on. So I made a few videos about this, but I'm very proud to identify as first generation Korean American, but I wasn't always proud of this growing up. Questions like the following have both like haunted and raised me since I was young. Questions like, if mom and dad can't help me with my school homework, who can? Am I the only 12 year old to call the IRS to negotiate a payment plan? How can I financially support my parents when I just started supporting myself? But I realize now that wrestling through these questions taught me so much about how to be resourceful, about the importance of delayed gratification, and also the beauty in collectivist mentality, which is something that we have lost sight of in this Western world. And reflecting on my career so far, as I've been a serial early employee at a few startups now, I realize that the environment of my childhood has somehow followed me to my adulthood, specifically in my career. Environmental traits like one being the constant reminder for the need to survive, putting the mission first above your self interests. Third, feeling of doing something that's much bigger than yourself, something for a collective unit. In other words, I started to notice these very characteristics that I've experienced as a child of immigrants and also experienced as a notion. And I call this operating principle, find what keeps you hungry because hunger was the primary driving force that drove my time at Notion. And I define hunger as an almost like animalistic instinct to survive or, you know, sheer curiosity or an appetite for challenge. And the said hunger was, you know, growing up a learned behavior that helped me help my parent, help me survive. It almost like primed me very well to thrive in like very early startup environment. And looking back, I saw how this theme of hunger has brought me to Notion, helped me thrive at Notion, and, and is now calling me to leave Notion. So in other words, when I first wanted to join the company, I cold emailed this person. I tried like three variations of their email. One went through and that landed me an interview. While I was at Notion, I initially started in customer support doing like a hundred tickets a day. And throughout my four years there, I eventually ended up building my own team and leading the startup program, which focuses on capturing as many startups to use Notion. And now a big proponent of why I'm choosing to leave Notion is the same element of hunger, which is moving me to take a bet on myself. And one thing that I will say is that I've since realized that tending to this hunger is best when it's an intentional choice versus accepting it as just like your default way of operating. And it's most definitely a privilege choice and it's a choice that I am very proud of. The second operating principle is adaptability wins. So quick story. I feel like every, you know, notable startup has like a book worthy origin story and Notion is like no exception. So back in 2015, Notion nearly almost died. Our founders were either faced with two decisions. One, they either fire everybody and start all over 
or two, they just shut down completely. So obviously the founders chose option number one. They ended up laying off their entire team and moving to um, Japan just to like really hunker down and build Notion from scratch. The reason why these founder origin stories are so fascinating, it's not necessarily just like the tenacity and courage to go through all of that. It's also the adaptability that is required for them to almost die, come back and like be in the running to win. I feel like early employees in particular have to muster up a very similar kind of strength. And from my perspective, I really think early employees have three end games. One, scale with the company. Two, you either fall behind or three, you either move on. Which door you choose to open very much depends on your ability to adapt. So in other words, if I had to choose one trait that predicts like the success of an early employee, I would say it's adaptability and Notion was an absolute masterclass in cultivating that skill. And I define adaptability in two factors. One is your ability to reinvent your value over time. And two is your ability to optimize your impact amid constant change. And in a hyper growth company, there is so much change going on that the company just looks different every 36 months. There's new people, there are new rules, and you just have to adapt in order to survive. So in other words, like the skills that made you really valuable to the team and you're making a lot of impact when there were 50 people, for example, won't always transfer over when there are 150 people. And I think this factor is very much more true, especially if you're non-technical like me. So in the early days, I made the most value and impact due to the sheer dedication of my output. And I think there's a reason why people say that strong generalists just make very good early employees because you have to simultaneously write and execute against your own playbook and you just have to do it. Like there is no excuse or no other option. So you just gotta rise to the challenge and do it, right? But what I learned is that over time, as the company has scaled, I could no longer just put my head down and work. In fact, I realized that now the shift in value that I carried, especially as an early employee, was the context I amassed or the culture I carried or the company values that embodied. I needed to infuse all of this into new cohorts of employees to new cohorts of leaders and my ability to influence people regardless of whether i was a people manager or not became that much more important and it honestly it was so easy to feel lost i did many times you know new departments are spinning up you're getting your third manager in a span of six months but honestly it is during those moments where i've learned the most <laughs> So the third operating principle that shaped my experience was ultimately look inwards. So I would say Notion, especially in the early days, did a lot of things differently compared to other startups. For example, we took our shoes off in the office and everyone wore house slippers. We had this reputation of turning away VCs to the point where they would leave cookies at our door. And every Friday we had live stories and live stories is one of my favorite traditions at Notion. Basically every Friday, one person presented their life and why they are the way that they are today. And I remember like so many Fridays, you know, we're just like huddled around this one single carpet laughing, you know, sometimes teared eyes and just like a lot of feels because it's so rare when you get that vulnerable in a work setting, right? And really understanding like, why is this the person the way that they are? And I think that really brought early employees like very close together and like that inevitably impacted the work that we did together, right? And I think it's like little quirks like this that really gave Notion its like soul. And now reflecting back, I really think what made Notion special, not just as a product, but just like as a company, is that it really originated from, you know, an unwavering vision, you know, the, the courage to be different and the ambition to be a generational company. All of those factors, those are all things that I think are best derived and sustained from within. So when I think about what makes Notion Notion, it really inspires me to look inwards. And as I've been reflecting on my time, I realize how that influence to always like look from within versus letting all these external things make our decisions and impact our behaviors. So for one, I really learned to hone my business sense and find that intersection between 
intuition and curiosity, but also like what makes sense for the business. And it was also by looking inwards where I felt like I was able to scale with the company. Honestly, during the early days, I felt like I was just like hanging onto the rail and just like flailing about as this rocket ship was going up. Now, you know, near the end of my time there, I really felt like I was sitting in the front seat, you know, buckled up, like I'm in for the ride and I have more control and agency over my experience. And I think I was able to do that because by looking inwards, I learned the importance to like keep your ego in check, the importance of regulating your emotions so that you can better ride the highs and lows of hyper growth. And now by looking inwards, I was able to kind of like recalibrate with my inner compass and really land on what is the kind of impact that I want to make for the rest of my career, and which is now why I have left. So these are a few of my many, many reflections that I have on Notion working there as an early employee for the last four years now. And I'm sure you're wondering like, what's next? What are you up to, Jenny? So this year is going to be quite interesting for me. And I hope to like share my journey and learnings with you along the way. But uh, for what's next, I am going back to my roots in healthcare and I want to explore building a company in this space and it's something I've been wanting to do for a while something that I never felt ready for because I was always you know focused on giving 110 percent to my experience that notion to my team but now it just like felt very much the right time any of you are curious about you know the different factors that led me to actually leaving notion and how I came to that decision. Happy to make another video about it. Let me know down in the comments. I also recognize this is such a privileged position to be in, especially in the midst of the recession and um, the layoffs and everything. And I like seriously don't take it for granted. I guess like my last parting words to you would be listen to what your wiser or courageous self is saying to you and consider, you know, what would it look like? Like if you were to honor what that voice is saying. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you will follow me along throughout my journey. Bye!